G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, Thursday afternoon here in Australia and we can see the markets bounced up just a little bit, but we're still down around that $1.3 trillion level. So again, sort of hanging in limbo, you know, no one really knows exactly what's going to go on, but at least in the last 24 hours things looked a little bit greener as we can see by uh, the, the green there, which is really nice. And again, you know, up 2.9% will take any kind of gain over a loss. Bitcoin dominance still sitting around sort of 45%. Uh, Guay, so under a dollar there, but still 24, not exactly cheap. Really waiting to see whether EIP1559 or 1559, whatever you want to call it, uh, makes much of a difference. Don't get me wrong, this is still cheap under a dollar in comparison to where it's been, but we really need that to be like basically a cent or two. One or two cents is about as much as, you know, we really should be paying for transaction fees. And look, that's coming up soon. I think the London hard fork, what is it, the 4th of August or something? So not too far away, uh, should be good. But anyway, let's have a bit of a look. We can see that there's, you know, some green kind of all over the place. So things looking pretty good. Uh, over the last 24 hours, all right, what has uh, done the best in the last 24 hours? Oh, Axie Infinity, I mean, this thing just continues to go up non-stop. Engine, nice, had a good bounce. That was almost down around about a dollar not that long ago. Mana, so we can see some more really nice bounces there. Solana, uh, Aave, but again, you know, they... They bounce in 24 hours, then they go down in 24 hours. So they still are kind of all over the place. There's no real kind of rhyme or reason to anything. But hey, look, 37% is good. 23%, 22%, 16%, 15%. Stacks got a 12% bounce. So very nice. All right, what about losses though? What's not done so well? Because again, generally something that did well yesterday, probably not going to do so well tomorrow the way things have been going. All right, that's not too bad. Good thing is losses aren't uh, too much at all. Synthetics, uh, a little bit of a loss there, less than a percent. But again, that's came from $5, I think 69 it was at. So you've still nearly doubled your money from about sort of a little over a week ago if you are lucky enough to buy there. And again, single digit losses and all pretty low single digit losses and some really good double digit gains there. So, you know, markets hanging in there a little bit uh, at the moment. But really, it's the Bitcoin chart. And as we can see, this has been trading sideways for such a long time now. And we, you know, this was a red candle yesterday and then it just turned green and now it's a little bit of a red candle. And again, these Bollinger Bands are so tight at the moment, you just get the feel like something is coming. Unfortunately, it could be to the downside. As we can see, you know, this bullish divergence that we had on the uh, RSI, it has been broken. This is broken below there, but it doesn't mean we can't move this out just a little bit because really this red line could have been, you know, going up there and was broken back here. Uh, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. But interesting, on the MACD, it looked like it was going to cross over and it still hasn't quite crossed over just yet. It's still hanging in there, not a crossover at the moment. So again, I get the feeling like I thought it was going to come this week, the move. It hasn't come. So again, we got this weekend coming up. We could have a little bit of a sell-off. That's definitely possible. And that will probably bring us down right to that kind of $31,000 level. And we're not too far off there. And then hopefully that means next week we get that big move up. But again, always got it in the back of my mind that we could be going down. And as I always say, none of this is financial advice. It's just my personal opinion. I'm not panic selling anything. I haven't seen a reason to panic sell anything and I generally don't like panic selling uh, you know, in general. So Bitcoin trading sideways, altcoins fluctuating up one day, down the next. What can you do? Only a couple of stories, but I found particularly these first two stories very interesting. So BlackRock CEO Larry Fink said in a CNBC interview on Wednesday that he is not seeing much demand for digital assets. All right, interesting. Now BlackRock, one of the biggest you know hedge funds uh, out there, and they really are only dealing with institutional sort of clients and not dealing with everyday you know sort of Joe blows. But he says he's not seeing much demand for digital assets at all. Bank of America, who generally deal with, you know, everyday Joe Blows, and particularly those in America, 
Bitcoin is now the third most crowded trade after tech stocks and ESG in new uh, fund manager survey. So from an institutional level, maybe it's gone a little bit quiet, but the retail uh, obviously hasn't uh, disappeared. But that uh, can be kind of scary as well, because that means institutions don't see Bitcoin uh, as a good buy at the moment, but retail does, and usually retail of the last one. But sometimes, and particularly with cryptocurrencies, as they're a new emerging asset, sometimes that retail, you know, sort of FOMO, I guess, that you're seeing now is just the people that have been in Bitcoin for a while. This isn't, you know, the last of it because, again, we've already come down 50% from our old all-time highs. So it'll be interesting to see whether this is just the crypto space, you know, kind of ramping this up, not the true sort of retail who haven't showed up yet. Or is this, again, the sign that we're about to go much lower because Bitcoin is not a good buy and as Larry uh, Fink said, he's just not seeing any interest in it any interest in digital assets at the moment i guess time will tell all right france proposes eu-wide cryptocurrency regulation so maybe they're going to take the lead uh, over in the eu france proposed giving more power to the paris-based european securities and markets authority so the esma and making it responsible for cryptocurrency oversight so is the rest of europe happy for france to kind of take the lead on that i guess we'll have to wait and see you know, there's all this talk about regulation and, you know, when it's coming and what it's going to be. And the next story maybe gives us a bit of an insight of when things might sort of start to become a little bit more clearer. So Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that they will see, sorry, they will issue a report on cryptocurrency, stablecoins and CBDCs in September. So still a couple of months away. And it just says they're going to issue a report. It doesn't mean they're going to necessarily come out with anything sort of concrete. But now maybe September is when we will see some clear, you know, at least guidelines on where this space may be going. But in leading from that, SEC delays decision on Wisdom Tree Bitcoin ETF. So surprise or not surprise, depending on sort of, you know, your thought process. Uh, another Bitcoin ETF has been delayed, but maybe September is when we're finally going to get clarity on where everything is. Not all the rules and regulations that we're looking for, but at least some, and maybe again, a Bitcoin ETF will get passed in maybe not September, but then October, or again, maybe it gets passed. You know, if this is early September, so say maybe September 1st, where they get the clear regulations, and then maybe, you know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks later, all of a sudden these Bitcoin ETFs, you know, Van, uh, Van X one, Skybridge's one, Scaramucci, and now obviously Wisdom Tree's Bitcoin ETF, and we know that Grayscale have also been looking to turn their trust into a Bitcoin ETF. So maybe sort of September is when we're going to get our... Yeah, our decisions might be made and you know hopefully things become at least a little bit clearer if we don't just have straight up guidelines you know they could take a while for all those guidelines to be done but I get the feeling like September is going to give us a little bit more indication of where things might be and you know maybe the market has to go sideways until September or maybe when we get those guidelines that will literally be the peak and then we go into uh, a bear market <laughs> it is so hard to tell no one knows but i just get the feeling like september is at least going to give us an indication of you know more the longer term uh decisions that are going to be made around you know cryptocurrencies as opposed to anything short term oh, that's up in the air none of us really know all right look that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another Everyone should be on that game train at the moment, and I'll see you next time.